What happens to people who eat, you know, more uh, animal products over the course of time, lower carbohydrate diets over the course of time, more fat, more protein? Is their health actually improved or is their health uh, worsened? And there's actually a number of different studies uh, that touch on this exact topic to try and calculate the what's called the all-cause mortality risk of individuals who eat a diet that's lower in carbohydrate. So there is some very compelling long-term epidemiological research which demonstrates <clears throat> that uh, people who eat a lower carbohydrate diet are generally at a significantly increased risk for all-cause mortality. So here in this first study, this study is analyzing more than 43,000 Swedish women over the course of about 15.7 years. And they stratify people into low carbohydrate, medium carbohydrate, and higher carbohydrate intake. And what they find is actually fascinating, which is that a one-tenth decrease in carbohydrate intake or an increase in protein intake or an increase in the low carbohydrate protein score, effectively meaning the lower their carbohydrate goes, all st statistically significantly increased the incidence of cardiovascular diseases and a 20 gram decrease in daily carbohydrate intake and a five gram increase in daily protein intake corresponds to a 5% increase in the overall risk for cardiovascular disease. Another study demonstrated that uh, in more than 22,000 uh, Greek adults, that they came to a similar conclusion. An increase in protein intake by about 15 grams per day and a decrease of carbohydrate intake by about 50 grams per day is associated with a 22% increase in overall mortality. There's a whole collection of these large-scale epidemiological research studies, and every single one of them published to date, 100% of them published to date, demonstrate the exact same conclusion which is that the lower your carbohydrate value, the higher your risk for all-cause mortality and mortality from cancer, from diabetes, and from heart disease. Whether you're looking at studies that, that analyze 85,000 women, 22,000 men, doesn't matter which country they come from, every single time these epidemiological studies come to a very similar conclusion, which is that the reduction of meat increases longevity. The reduction of animal products increases longevity. And the inclusion of more fat and more protein and more animal products decreases longevity. And some very powerful meta-analyses that have sort of sum totaled all of this research has also found the exact same thing. That the risk of all-cause mortality uh, in those who are eating the lowest carbohydrate diets is actually the worst. So the lower your carbohydrate value, the, uh, the higher your risk for all-cause mortality. And this is not definitive research by any stretch of the imagination, but if you, com if you combine this research with the research that we've seen in small-scale studies, in metabolic ward studies, in randomized control trials, in meta-analyses of randomized control trials, in smaller populations, and then also uh, the research which is shown in larger populations, it all points in the same direction. And that direction is that the lower the carbohydrate value of your diet, the more problems are likely to unfold from a metabolic perspective into the future, which is why, again, we say over and over and over again that our goal is to try and get you to control your blood glucose very well. But we want you to control your blood glucose wearing both short-term goggles and long-term goggles. Your short-term goggles show you what happens in the few hours following a meal, but your long-term goggles show you what happens 20, 30, and 50 years into the future. And if you pay attention to both of those and you have both pairs of goggles on and you're constantly flipping between the two of them over and over and over again, you're likely to recognize that eating a more plant-strong diet or a plant-rich diet is going to lead you to the best short-term and long-term outcomes simultaneously. So uh, Walter Willett says potatoes are fine for people who are metabolically healthy, but not so good when they're one of those foods when you're not metabolically healthy anymore, you shouldn't eat. What do you say about that? 
So we would say the same thing that we say to, uh, I would actually extrapolate uh, on Walter Willett's uh, statement here. And I would say foods that are carbohydrate rich, and that includes fruits and starchy vegetables and legumes and whole grains, all four of them are problematic if and only if you are living in an insulin resistant state. When you are living in an insulin resistant state, you, you include those foods on top of your baseline insulin resistance, your blood glucose becomes hard to control. It's likely that your cholesterol level may go up over the course of time. It's likely that you may gain weight and you may also feel ill, okay? But that's why it's very important for uh, individuals to reverse the underlying disease mechanism that caused insulin resistance and caused the metabolic syndrome, if you will, over the course of time. When you start to reverse those processes and regain insulin sensitivity in your liver and regain insulin sensitivity in your muscle and lower your blood pressure and lower your cholesterol value and regain carbohydrate tolerance, then you are earning the ability to eat more carbohydrate rich foods, including potatoes, like Walter Willett says. And then in that state, when you've reversed or you are in the process of reversing years worth of metabolic damage, then you can start to include these carbohydrate rich foods. And not only will your blood glucose be well controlled, but they will also help control your blood glucose and actually lower your blood glucose, lower your body weight, lower your cholesterol, and lower your blood pressure at the same time. What about that paper that Walter Willett co-authored from Harvard? The nurse's health study that says just a tablespoon, a little less than a tablespoon of olive oil a day reduces your mortality by greater than 90, greater than 10%. The inclusion of uh, a little bit of oil, which we are, you know, truth be told, not huge fans of, especially for people living with insulin resistance. But if you were to include the oil in substitution for more saturated animal-based fats and or more packaged and processed goods, then I could see how that would, that could improve many markers of your metabolic health. Um, but just for clarity, we do recommend that people living with any form of diabetes or people who have impaired glucose tolerance, AKA insulin resistance, uh, try, do their best to try and avoid oils because we find over and over again that those who do input oil into their diet find that their blood glucose is harder to control both in the short and the long term. And by eliminating those oils, they can actually get significantly improved blood glucose control, which then lowers their A1C and sets the way for them to dramatically improve their cholesterol value, their triglyceride value, and their blood pressure at the same time.